right now. Good morning. We are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, 28 degrees to start Woo! the weekend. And here's the thing, this is still warmer than some of the temps we saw last <laughs> week. We're going to check in with Mia Montgomery in just a few moments from now. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We made it. We made it. I mean, there was, there was a lot of obstacles, a lot of people going through a lot of things. But we made it. How was your your freeze, I guess? It was good. Okay. Uh, everything was safe. Yeah, no no busted pipes. No busted okay, pipes. Okay, good. Cats survived. No electric vehicles stuck in there. <laughs> okay, good. No. And it's so funny. I sent this video to Max last night about this girl, and she's yes. from the Northeast. So good. And she's complaining, like Max often mm -hmm. does, about the cold. I'm like, how can you complain? And she, her thing is, Texans, mm -hmm. Texas, Texan winners are unpredictable. Right. So she's like, that's what makes it worse than winters up north. Right. It resonated with me because Mia, when we're up north, like I have a buddy in Chicago, he's like, it's a negative 11 wind chill right now. And I was like, but that's what you signed up for. I, like, I feel like it's just <laughs> mentally, you knew what you're mentally getting into. they know <laughs> like it's going to be cold. Wind chills are going to be horrible. And yeah, they're going to see buckets of snow every winter. That just comes with the territory, right? right. Of yeah. being from the north. We're not built for stuff like that. Like a hundred percent. No. So very happy that at least the worst of the colder temperatures are behind us, but we had a second push of some of that colder air with the front that moved through overnight Thursday and early Friday. And because of that, it is still a very cold start to this Saturday. Temperatures below freezing for all of us in and around the San Antonio area. 28 right now over at the airport. It's 23 in comfort, 32 farther off to our south in Pleasanton, 25 out west in Uvalde. But when you factor in what we still have left of a a little bit of a northeasterly breeze in place. Wind chills are in the teens and 20s, so you will want to bundle up, layer up if you're stepping out for any early Saturday morning plans because, yes, it is a cold start. But we are going to warm above freezing, so a big difference compared to what we saw earlier this week. 40 degrees at noon, 45 the forecast high temperature here in San Antonio. So still, though, a bit chilly, all things considered. Increasing cloud cover is expected throughout the day. So we're going to start off with a bit more sunshine this morning, but we're going to end the day with more of the cloud cover in place. That is just cosmetic changes for what we're looking ahead to as we head even into our Sunday. More changes, cloudy, increasing rain chances throughout the day tomorrow. Widespread rain in the forecast tomorrow night and into Monday morning, maybe even a few non-severe thunderstorms possible there as well. And we've got even more rain chances on the way. Those are going to continue daily into at least the first half of next week, along with warmer temperatures. So we're going to get you the latest version of future cast time and all out for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Mia. It is a problem that we talk about day in and day out. In fact, there was a huge press conference about it just a couple weeks ago. We're talking about property crimes and one of the more recent high notoriety ones, thousands of dollars worth of goods stolen during three separate break ins, all within the same 24 hour span. So it happened at the Smash and Crab com Commissary near Desavala and I-10. Security video shows two men break the lock on the trailer, which you're looking at right now on your screen, shortly after taking off with boxes of meat in a white pickup truck. They then returned with a black SUV, this time leaving with a second round of merchandise. Didn't stop there though. Security footage showing a white pickup returning again, leaving with more boxes. It was just really hard to watch, just watching all of our stuff kind of go out the back door into a pickup truck. I mean, I, I hope you get caught and I hope you learn a lesson from this because it's not right. The commissary CEO says that the stuff that was stolen it cost them up to $20,000 in sales. And speaking of crimes, guilty. That's a verdict in the trial of Hilson Avila Rodriguez. The jury announcing this decision just before 4 o'clock yesterday. Avila Rodriguez, he was on trial for the 2018 murders of Nicholas Milanovic and Julia Wright. Now, he told the jury that he did kill them because he th his girlfriend threatened him to do so. Avila Rodriguez will automatically be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. We have extensive coverage on this trial, so much more ins and outs of the courtroom, just head to KSAT.com. Two San Antonio ISD officials have lost their jobs after heating problems at the district school. San Antonio ISD Superintendent Jaime Aquino told staff in a memo 
that he accepted the resignations of Deputy Superintendent of Operations Ken Thompson and Chief of Operations Mike Eaton. In his memo, Aquino said the district knows there is more than one cause to the heating problems and that it plans to examine the event and publish a report. Though he also said it was, quote, an error on the part of leaders in the district. All the district's 98 schools have been out for the past two days. The teachers were able to get online to, through Classroom Dojo, and they were able to have them let them know, like, hey, they have this assignment, they can go on here, there's, there's a, they sent their links, resources, so that way they're not just sitting at home bored or just watching TV. A district news release stated the district is working around the clock to ensure schools will reopen this coming Monday. A weird day in the world of sports, especially sports journalism. Guild represented staff at the iconic Sports Illustrated. A horrible end to the week yesterday. Most or probably all of their staff writers on Sports Illustrated, they were laid off, all according to the magazine's union. In a memo to staff, magazine publisher, the Arena Group, saying the owner of Sports Illustrated, the Authentic Brands Group, revoked its publishing rights because of missed payments. ABG saying it gave the publishing company a quote-unquote notice of breach and an opportunity to cure the breach. The magazine's union says it is asking ABG to ensure the continued publication of the magazine. And in a statement, ABG says Sports Illustrated will continue, but didn't exactly give details on how they would do so. JetBlue and Spirit Airlines aren't giving up on their merger. The carriers filed an appeal against a federal court ruling that blocked the deal. The merged company would become the nation's fifth largest airline. Attorney General Merrick Garland said the merger would lead to higher airline fares across the industry. Both airlines, they disagree, saying it would actually bring more low fares to more customers and increase competition against dominant carriers. In any case, we have been following since it started a grand jury indicting Alec Baldwin on an involuntary manslaughter charge. Remember in October of 2021, Baldwin, the lead actor of a movie that was filming called Rust, was pointing a gun at a cinematographer during a rehearsal on set. That gun went off, killing her. And, well, special prosecutors brought this case before a grand jury in Santa Fe, New Mexico this week, months after receiving a new analysis of the gun that was used. Now, Baldwin's attorneys, they have indicated they will be fighting the charge. In other news, the pandemic uncovered the mental health crisis within our local schools, leaving the state to turn to a digital outlet after counselors became overloaded with cases. So districts are starting to use UT Health's online counseling network. Counselors, students, and parents told Courtney Friedman the option has changed a lot of lives. It was a lot, and we were all grieving in certain ways. Three years ago, the weight of the world seemed to fall on Churchill High School senior Yvette Tejas. My dad passed away November uh, 28th, and our house actually flooded January 1st, so New Year's, and we were stuck in a hotel for almost six months. Consumed by anxiety and depression, she needed someone to talk to. School counselors were overwhelmed, so she was referred to an online counselor with T-Chat, UT Health's Texas Child health access through telemedicine. I mean, my dad was my best friend, and so he was like my go-to person. And then when I found this person, I was like, who are you? Where have you been my whole life? They were able to help her cope through that and um, open up again. Yvette's mom, Isela Chamberlain, overcome with relief. And she's not the only one. The burden's on you. Yeah. And now this is able to take that off. Yeah, we, we're spread thin. You're the, sure. you're the only full-time mm -hmm. counselor yes. here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Northern Hills Elementary counselor Katie Robertson is dedicated to her students, but can't handle the immense load. Now she can refer students to teach at. What I'll do is I log in, then I just start adding in information. It could be academic issues, it could be anger or violence, it could be anxiety, and very often it is. She says kids who need extra care can get medication help and even be referred to other therapists. I did online and then I actually did the bereavement, the Children's Bereavement Center. It's a testament to the transition between the in-person, T-chat, and then further counseling like mm -hmm. the bereavement center. Yes. So you've got it all. I have it all. I've been through it all. Her experience so transformative. She's about to go to college to get a degree in psychology, helping others find the peace and strength that she's found. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of mental health, one business in Seguin wants to make sure you stay on track with it. 
Pecan Town Books and Brews on South Camp Street is hosting a mental health fair today. A therapist, nutritionist, and chiropractor will be there to answer all of your questions about fighting depression and anxiety so you have a successful year. Now the event coordinator at Pecan Town telling KSAT what inspired her to plan the event and why it is so important. I had horrible postpartum depression and because of how awful it was, um, I needed help. And there wasn't a lot of uh, resources available to me. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to turn to. Because of that, I wanted to encourage people who needed it and just have a space where everything will be. That way we can send people out to the community where they need it. Mental Health Fair is free. It's open to everyone. Starts at 10, ends at 1 again at address 212 South Camp Street in Seguin. We also have an article with more information about the event on our website, ksat.com. Time now, just about 611. It is still under 30 degrees. Still ahead, buying homes in 2024. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? We'll hear from local realtors on what home buyers can expect in 2024. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend, starting off with a cold weekend. It is definitely a cold start out there. Uh, we've got a lot of changes just moving in, at least over the next 36 hours. Cold and increasing cloud cover throughout the day today, but then tomorrow the focus is going to turn to increasing rain chances. So it is looking like a soggy start to next week, and those rain chances do continue at least through the first half of next week as well. So I want to talk about that and the changes we have headed our direction. Yes, it is cold out there. We're not expecting any rain today, but that is going to change by the end of the day tomorrow, bumping that up to a 60% chance by late Sunday afternoon and into Sunday evening. An 80% more widespread potential moves in Sunday night. That lingers into the Monday morning drive. Still scattered showers expected Tuesday and into Wednesday as we see some additional energy move into the Lone Star State. So I want to talk about that setup. You can see across South Central Texas right now, nothing going on. Clear skies in place for most of us. Winds out of the Northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. A bit of a different story, though, across the western coastline. We've got some rain near San Francisco, stretching down to Los Angeles, even a little bit of snow in the higher elevations as you get closer to the Rockies. That is all associated with a disturbance, an area of low pressure that is approaching the west coast. That's going to continue to work eastward here over the next 36 hours and move into portions of the desert southwest by tomorrow. As that approaches the Lone Star State, we start to see little pockets of upper level energy move into the state of Texas then and that's what's going to help spark up some of that rain a few sprinkles as early as Sunday morning. So here's your future cast again today not expecting any rain out there, but you will notice increasing cloud cover throughout the day. Additional clouds working in from the west. So that's what we'll be monitoring keeping temperatures in the mid 40s later on this afternoon. A few sprinkles possible by seven to eight o'clock tomorrow morning in San Antonio. There also is the potential I do want to mention for a brief window to find a little bit of very light freezing rain across parts of the hill country. Again, in between about 7 to 9 a.m. tomorrow for places like Bandera, Kerrville, stretching over to Lakey, even Rock Springs. Very light, no travel impacts expected. This is actually going to be pretty insignificant, but maybe a little bit of a light glaze on some of those elevated surfaces, car windshields, street signs, mailboxes, things of that nature. But then we quickly see that transition back to just cold liquid rain as temperatures climb above 32 degrees degrees by midday in the hill country. Most of us just dealing with that cold liquid rain by three o'clock, increasing rain chances and coverage, especially west of I-35. Then that's going to continue to fill in as we head into Sunday evening, even more so Sunday night and early Monday morning. That's also the window where we'll be monitoring for a few non severe rumbles of thunder there as well. Expect a soggy start to the day on Monday, especially for the Monday morning drive. Definitely plan on giving yourself a a little bit of extra time out the door taking the rain gear with you. That's going to continue, especially here in San Antonio through about midday, and then that shifts farther off to the east, but still keeping some scattered rain chances around Tuesday and into Wednesday as well. In terms of rainfall totals, I like around two inches for us here in the Alamo City. Generally lower totals the farther west that you go, higher totals closer to Houston, where they could pick up upwards of five inches before next week is done. 
so something we will continue to monitor. But until then, freezing temperatures across South Central Texas right now, upper 20s, low 30s, wind chills in the low 20s for most of us, 40 degrees at lunchtime, 45 the forecast high temperature, mostly cloudy skies by the time all is said and done. By the way, with that cloud cover and rain chances increasing tomorrow, we may struggle to get out of the 30s in a few locations. So all in all, it will be a chilly weekend, but into next week, a warm front moves through with those increasing rain chances and temperatures warm up as well. We're back into the 60s for those daytime highs. We really need this rain. This is El Nino rain. It, we definitely need the rain. Yes, with mm -hmm. the El Nino pattern shift that we're kind of seeing here and it could be drought denting. So coming up in the ne next half hour as well, we're going to show you the latest drought monitor and what we could see in terms of improvements over Hopefully. the next few days. Thank you, Mia. Of course. Thank you, Mia. Time now, 618, 28 degrees. New year, new fitness goals and new workout equipment. If that sounds like something you need, after the break, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains what you can do to get rid of the old and bring in the new. If you have a treadmill that you're using as a pricey coat rack, or it's just run its course, it's probably not helping you get much of a workout in. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz looks at what you can do with old unwanted equipment and which new machines are a good bet. So how's that New Year's fitness thing going? Coach David Poland has advice. Having the consistency and the discipline every day to be able to reach those long-term goals by having short-term victories is ultimately how you're gonna get there. So if you have a machine that you're just not into, he says get rid of it. If the equipment is in good shape, uh, potentially you could sell it online or someone locally, or obviously you could always donate the equipment to somebody that might use it. Check with pre-owned sports stores like Played Against Sports and organizations like Habitat for Humanity Restores, the Salvation Army, or even community centers to see if they want it. And of course, you can list it for sale on sites like Facebook Marketplace. Some manufacturers will actually recycle gear for you. But if it's pretty useless, go ahead and trash it. I called the city of San Antonio to see if I could put this old treadmill out on the curb for bulky pickup day. That's twice a year. Good news? They said I can. But if you live in a city where you can't, you may need to contact a junk removal company that will pick it up for a fee. So you want to buy something new you will use? It's an investment. So Consumer Reports tests treadmills, ellipticals, and rowers to help you choose. Here are some top contenders. This Peloton Tread Treadmill. They say is a good treadmill. The best if you want the subscription. The Soul E95S elliptical got top scores, and the Hydro Rower was also a favorite. Whether it's, you know, you're working in home or at a gym, I mean, find something that is going to work out long term for you, something you enjoy doing, something you want to do on a regular basis. That means finding something you enjoy. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now is 623, 28 degrees. Oh, Texas Eats? Oh, I love that you were so surprised by this. Plus, look at the cheese pull. <laughs> oh, my gosh. David Elder takes us inside a food truck near the Pearl. Oh. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Looks like a lot of fusion going on there. Oh yeah, we got pizza, tacos, ramen bowls. Yeah. We're gonna have a look right after the break. That looks delicious. So we grab the spatula right here, throw it right on top, and then this is the chef's kiss on top right there. So we're gonna go under it right here. Like I said, it's a handful of two pounds of media. So we're gonna take, transfer it over, and we put it right here. And I'm telling you, this food right here, not only does it look good, it smells good, and yes, I did already have some, but it tastes delicious as well. All right, grab a taco with me right here. Break this guy open, and look on the inside. You have that cheese. What kind of cheese are y'all using here? We use a New York blend. Oh, a New York blend. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all fancy with it then. All right, you yes, come sir. with the East Coast blend of cheese. <laughs> and then you have all that meat, and these are loaded up. Of course, I'm gonna open this guy up, and you want a little bit of cilantro on there. This is the green salsa, and I'm gonna pour that right in the middle as well. So I'm gonna dunk this baby in that. Cheers to you. Casey Tacos, that's the bite. Oh my God. Give me some elbow. Bam! Oh, oh brother! <laughs> That's a bite. Mm -hmm. That looked fantastic. The green salsa. All right. I'm such a green salsa oh, the girly. The cilantro in there too? I mean, that was a pro's pro way to do it. Lots of onions. Oh yeah. Are you onion lighter? Oh, onion, onion heavy. heavy. Yeah. Not only the taste, but also the texture. Yeah. I like the crunch. All right, time <laughs> now, 628, 28 degrees. 28 degrees. Fun. It's still happening. 
<laughs> we're still cold, we're still freezing. Hey, but we need have some much needed rain on the way. Mia is in for Sarah and she will tell us how much rain we can expect. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning. I gotta say, we're starting off cold, but what a weathery, wintry mix. Yeah, there's a water bottle under going there. Going on I 100% down. just kicked it under the table. It is yeah, now something it was like is rolling forever. down there. So I apologize to Courtney Freeman, who will be here later today. All right, Courtney. And hey. she'll be like, why is there a water bottle there? But, Max, from cold to rain, but that rain, Mia, won't be freezing rain or anything we need to worry about. Just good rain. Nothing to worry about. We have a small window tomorrow morning where we could see a little bit of light freezing rain across portions of the hill country. No travel impacts. It's going to be insignificant, but we could see a little bit of a light glaze on some of those car windshields and elevated surfaces, things of that nature. But yes, that all comes with increasing rain chances. Most of us just cold liquid rain as early as tomorrow. Before we can get there, we have to deal with the cold this morning. 20s and low 30s in and around the San Antonio area kicking off this Saturday. 28 officially here in town. It's 32 in Castroville, 22 in the Lost Maples area, 26 in New Braunfels. Still a little breezy in spots, so when you factor in those winds coming in from the northeast, wind chills are in the teens and low 20s to start the day. So it is very, very cold out there. If you're planning on stepping out over the next couple of hours, definitely bundle up. Upper 20s still by about 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll start to warm well above freezing, but still chilly into this afternoon. 40 degrees, the forecast temperature at noon, 45 that forecast high. You'll notice here we are expecting the cloud cover to increase throughout the day. One of the reasons why it's going to be a little bit cooler later on this afternoon. Most of us topping off in the 40s, 43 for places like Kerrville and Comfort, 45 here in town, 48 in Floresville. As as well as Nixon, so still a cooler than average day. Starting off near freezing in a few locations tomorrow, we may struggle to climb out of the 30s tomorrow, and that's because of that locked in cloud cover as well as the increasing rain chances headed our direction. So a few sprinkles possible as early as tomorrow morning, more widespread showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms by Sunday night and lingering into early Monday there as well. Those rain chances don't stop there. They continue through at least the first half of next week and temperatures warm up even more so as well. So we're going to get you the latest version of future cast time it all out for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Mia. Well, if you do plan on traveling, especially in the far northwest side this weekend, there are some important traffic closures you need to be aware of. Construction is closing the main lanes of Loop 1604 and I-10 interchange. RJ Marquez has what you need to know. Well, it's round two of some major closures on the far northwest side. So let's get right to it, show you exactly what you're going to be looking at here. So what we're talking about is that continued work taking place there on 1604 and I-10. They're going to be shutting down both directions of I-10 and also 1604 at this interchange. So if you are coming up on I-10, you're going to have to exit UTSA Boulevard to La Quintera Parkway. That's when you're going to be able to get back onto the highway. Now for our drivers on 1604, you're going to have to exit Vance Jackson, go all the way up to the rim and around Around, and then you could get back onto Lock and Terra Parkway on the 1604 side. So we went out the other day and got some drone video of exactly the latest sort of updates that we're seeing here. So again, this is a ramp that is being built uh, from Loop 1604 eastbound to westbound I-10 that's going to be going up to Bernie. And uh, what Texad is doing and construction crews, they're going to be hanging more beams this weekend, of course, if the weather allows. This closure is going to be in place through 5 o'clock Monday morning, and they're going to continue with this at another closure next weekend as well. So obviously you see these beams are going up right now. There's a lot of work taking place there. So if you can avoid the area, make sure to do that. We have more information on KSAT.com. We come out real quick here to our maps. All right, and again, just one more reminder, 1604 I-10 completely shut down through the weekend. Hopefully we could get things back open at 5 a.m. That's what TechSide is saying on Monday. So just avoid the area if you can, if possible. Stay safe out there. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, we now know two people fighting for their lives after a stabbing on the city's southeast side. So take a look. San Antonio police telling us this happened just after 10 o'clock last night. Now, this is on Goliad and Lassa Street. A fight started inside a bar. It was broken up by the staff. Then it started back up in the parking lot. That's when two suspects pulled out knives, stabbed two other people. Police still searching for the suspects. As for the victims, both taken to the hospital. And at last check, in critical condition. 
Well, since the horrific school shooting at Robb Elementary 20 months ago, families of the victims, they wanted officials to be held accountable. And Friday, the Uvalde County District Attorney convened a special grand jury to go over her investigative materials. Now, as Lee Waldman explains, it is a rarely used tactic, but it is a tactic that criminal defense attorney believes could be a good tool. After repeated calls Thursday. Do your job. What else does she possibly need to prosecute? Evaldi County District Attorney Christina Mitchell making a big step Friday, convening a special grand jury to examine the Robb Elementary School shooting investigation. The news first reported by the Uvalde Leader News. So what that should have Criminal defense attorney Brent De La Paz says calling for a special grand jury is a unique move. A special grand jury has this specific purpose of looking at one particular issue, one particular case. A dozen people from the community will serve on the special grand jury, going over the investigation that the Texas Rangers handed over to Mitchell. KSAT has learned through a joint lawsuit with other media organizations against the Texas Department of Public Safety, the investigative material is 2.8 terabytes of data. And the whole purpose is for them to look at everything instead of one thing in a vacuum. Now they have uh, an array of information that they can pour over. The special grand jury can subpoena witnesses, compel evidence, and most importantly, ask questions about charges that could be brought. Child endangerment. Do you think that would be a fair charge to present to a special grand jury or grand jury? And Everything is, is going to be on the table. And I think if a special grand juror were to ask that exam, exact same question, I think that's a fair question to ask. Child endangerment is a felony charge in Texas. It has a statute of limitations of five years or 10 years after the victim's 18th birthday. The special grand jury proceedings are expected to last at least six months. Then they'll hand over their recommendations to the DA. From there, Mitchell can sit a regular grand jury and pursue criminal charges if she chooses. They can then use that information to start asking those questions, to start trying to find out what is a reasonable charge to bring and against whom. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Local law enforcement agencies and training academies, they are closely examining these recommendations in the Department of Justice's Uvalde report. There were nearly 300 recommendations in that would impact law enforcement and emergency responders. Michael Davis, an instructor with the Alamo Area Regional Law Enforcement Academy, says every first responding agency should immediately read the DOJ report and then one work on a strategy strategic communication plan that includes surrounding agencies to look at and update their policies and three practice their emergency plans. Having that mindset of it'll never happen here or it has, hasn't happened here is the wrong mindset to have. Our goal is to be prepared. You need to know that it works when you need it and you need to know that your people are trained to do it and we have to have the commitment to serve our community. His question to law enforcement leaders is when was the last time you practiced and were trained? Davis says there should also be a plan to help communities heal. And a wanted man now behind bars, and he has some additional charges to go along with it. All of this after an altercation at a convenience store in Cibolo. Police ended in officer shooting at the suspect. It happened Friday morning in the 2400 block of FM 1103. Police say 34-year-old Cesar Gomez was said to be acting strange by one of the gas pumps. When officers spoke with Gomez and a second man in the vehicle, they realized Gomez had warrants for possession of methamphetamine and a probation violation. Officers asked Gomez to step out of his car, but he refused. The officer tried to use the taser. At that point, uh, the driver pulled a pistol and pointed it towards the officer. The officer then um, retreated for their safety and, and fired shots towards that individual. Officer Matt Schema with Cibolo PD says nobody was hit and that in an attempt to leave the scene, Gomez got his vehicle stuck and ended up giving himself up. Gomez is facing additional charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer and unlawful carry. The officer who shot in this case is on administrative leave, which is protocol. Time now, 641, 28 degrees. As we prepare for another cold weekend, one local nonprofit is helping seniors by giving them a winter storm kit. 
We'll tell you what's inside, how it helps, and what you can do to help as well. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, still haven't broken into 30 degrees. You can see on the left side of the screen, sun's starting to peak up. It is going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a little chilly. We're going to check in with me and Montgomery in just a few moments. Welcome back. A local nonprofit is helping seniors navigate this winter weather by giving them a winter storm kit. This winter, Meals on Wheels of San Antonio has distributed over 4,000 kits to seniors and handed out more than 300 heaters. The kits included food like tuna, peanut butter, things that will last. It also has a flashlight, anti-slip socks, Mylar blankets, and hand warmers. The only day we were closed was MLK when everyone else was, and we were open every other day this week because we know how important it is for them to get that daily check. And so we were still delivering and doing that daily health check, that friendly visit. Meals on Wheels is looking for volunteers. Delivering just one hour a month is life changing for 10 Meals on Wheels clients. So if you know a senior that might need a meal, you can make a referral or apply for yourself. Find out more information, just head to our website, ksat.com. All right, Mia Montgomery joining us dark and early this morning. Rain on the way. Rain is on the way. As early as tomorrow. Much needed rain, by okay. the way. But we kind of went from one extreme to the other, right? Very, very cold temperatures early this week. And now we've got just an active weather pattern to talk about. So let's get you those weather headlines. Yes, it is cold out there this morning. All of us in and around the San Antonio area below freezing. We will warm into the 40s later on this afternoon. The cloud cover is going to increase, though. So that means that it still will be a bit chilly later on today. Tomorrow, even cloudier. Overcast skies, increasing rain chances before the day is done. Widespread rain is expected overnight Sunday, early Monday morning, maybe a few non severe thunderstorms possible there as well. And those rain chances don't stop there. They're actually going to continue into at least the first half of next week. A warm front moves through too, which also means those temperatures are going to warm. Highs in the 60s, lows in the 50s will be a common theme as we head into next week as well. Not there right now, though. 28 degrees, a very cold start to this Saturday. Dew point of nine, so very drier in place. One of the reasons why temperatures were able to tumble so much through the overnight, along with those clear skies. Feels like 19, though, because we do have winds in from the northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. So please bundle up here if you're planning on stepping out over the next couple of hours. A good chunk of the Lone Star State dealing with those temperatures below freezing is 21 in Waco. 18 right now, the current temperature in Abilene and as we zoom this out and take a look at the big picture across the country, you can see still a good chunk of the lower 48 here dealing with some of that Arctic air. It's four degrees in Louisville, 12 in Cleveland. As you get closer to Salt Lake City, around 30 degrees, a little bit warmer above freezing across portions of the desert southwest and even over to the western coastline. That's where a disturbance is sparking up some scattered to even widespread rain. A few thunderstorms near San Francisco. Francisco stretching over to Los Angeles there as well out in California. That disturbance is what's going to be tracking eastward here over the next 36 hours and essentially allowing additional moisture and energy to work into the state of Texas, sparking up our rain chances here at home again as early as tomorrow. So I want to time that out here in your future cast. You can see in between about 7 to 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, a few sprinkles possible. Also can't completely rule out that brief window to find some light freezing rain across portions of the hill country near Bandera, Kerrville, Rock Springs, as well as Lakey, maybe even as far south as northern Uvalde and Medina counties here. Again, I want to stress that this window is very small and anything we do have would be light, so very insignificant. No travel impacts expected, maybe just a light glaze on some of those elevated surfaces, but then it quickly transitions back over to that cold liquid rain by late morning and around lunchtime as those temperatures warm above 32 degrees. That rain Rain filling in, especially by Sunday night through the overnight and early Monday morning. So plan for a very soggy and messy morning commute on Monday. You'll definitely want to pack the rain gear with you. But then by about lunchtime, that's going to transition farther off to the east. Still, we'll call it about an 80% potential early Monday. And then scattered rain chances continue Tuesday and into Wednesday. I like around two inches for us here in San 
San Antonio by the time all is said and done. Lower totals the farther west did you go, higher the farther east. Whatever we do find, definitely helping out with the latest drought monitor. But until then, yes, just prep for a very cold start to the day. Chilly into this afternoon. High temperature near 45 with those increasing clouds. Near freezing for some of us. First thing tomorrow morning, we may struggle to climb out of the 30s because of that cloud cover and the rain chances tomorrow. That continues into next week. There are those warmer temperatures we were talking about. Lows in the 50s, highs in the 60s. I bet a lot of South Texans are very excited as we continue to thaw things out, guys. We are out of the 30s. We are soon. Soon. We're not even in the 30s right now. It's very cold this morning, <laughs> but yes, soon we will be there. Thank All you, right. Mia. Of course. Thank you, Mia. Time now, 650, 28 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. It's a topic we talk about a lot. Home prices in a new year could mean new movement for San Antonio real estate. So high home prices and even higher mortgage rates were the norm last year. Now realtors are talking to Avery Everett about what buyers can expect in 2024. This area leading right into the family area. Where the in the hunt to buy a home. It's going to be a very solid market. Broker associate David Anderson says he's hopeful for 2024. I think it has a potential to be really solid. After a year of high home prices and high mortgage rates, Anderson says the San Antonio real estate market is on the move. Everything that went was going wrong at the beginning of 2022 is going right in 2024. Right now, looking at the potential for 2024, it's a Toastmaster fireplace. Anderson says mortgage rates could see the most change. We know interest rates. In the last 11 weeks, interest rates have dropped continually. The last two weeks bumped up a little bit, but we know everything that falls quickly must come back up quickly. Right now, he says home prices in some parts of town are still pretty steep. Prices are not coming down, but they're still going up, but at a slower rate, which helps out buyers. Anderson says 2024 will still be a seller's market, meaning the demand for homes is still higher than the supply. And this house in particular. His advice for those looking to sell is simple. Get your homes ready and get them on the market now, because if you wait till the competition gets there, you're going to be behind the curve. Brokers tell us what's available on the market and interest rates are usually the typical factors that can really fluctuate a market. In 2024, though, the real estate market could be impacted by a couple of new laws that just took effect at the beginning of this year involving property taxes and homeowners associations. This has been something that's been pushed for a while. Governor. John Taylor, a political science professor at UTSA, says of the 31 new laws that went into effect on January 1st, multiple could have market impacts regarding property taxes. Specifically, people need to keep in mind um, that it drives down local school district tax rates and doubles the homestead exemption. Some laws could even affect current homeowners. HOAs have to provide property owners with a list of what is not allowed. A new year could always bring new challenges. You can imagine all the things, the lively people moving around. But Anderson says for the first time in a long time, he's feeling hopeful about market change. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 656, 28 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, temperature is still below freezing here as we approach the top of the 7 a.m. hour. 28 degrees right now here in San Antonio, 32 in Pleasanton, 30 over in Carrizo Springs. 21, though, as you make your way closer to Rock Springs. So a very, very cold start to the day. Definitely layer up here if you have any early Saturday morning plans. Still chilly, though, into the afternoon. So we've got clear skies in place right now, but that's going to change here, especially by this. This afternoon, increasing cloud cover moving in from the west, holding those temperatures to the mid 40s. So 45, that's our forecast high here in San Antonio. Winds out of the east northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Rain chances increase throughout the day tomorrow. Grab the umbrella. You'll notice that continues overnight Sunday in more of a widespread fashion into early Monday there too. Scattered rain chances throughout the first half of next week. Temperatures warmer, lows in the 50s and highs in the 60s. All right. I'm excited about it. Me, Me too. too. Yeah. We need it, that's for sure. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll check back in with you at 8 o'clock. See y'all at 8. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. It is 8 o'clock. It is Saturday, January 20th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Good morning. So we, we've 
presumptively made it through the, the worst parts of the cold. It is still cold this morning, but it's nothing. 27 degrees, yeah. yeah it is nothing like what back. we saw, though, earlier this week. I got to ask, though, did the plants make it? I know you had this whole strategy. Yes. Okay. Strategy worked. It worked. Cardboard. Okay. Cardboard. How are the, the cats? You have about, what, four or five I stray cats? I have three feral cats okay. that refuse to go inside, but we made them a shelter. Good. They made it? Yeah, they love okay. it. That's like their new little Are they house. feral anymore if you've named them? Yeah, but they're feral because they won't let me get near them. Like, I try to mm. pet them or put flea medicine on them. No. But they'll gotcha. take the food I give them. Okay. And the good news, me and Montgomery, we're going to get rain. We are going to get rain. Yes. We're not today, but as we head into tomorrow, rain chances are going to increase throughout the day. And they do stick with us through at least the first half of next week. So much needed rain. But before we can get there, we are dealing with the cold this morning, as Sarah and Max were just talking about. All of us in and around the San Antonio area below freezing early this morning. 28 degrees right now here in San Antonio officially. Same out west in Hondo. It's 24 in Uvalde, 21 in the Lost Maples area, 27 over there in Comal County and Canyon Lake. Still have a little bit of a northeasterly breeze in place. So when you factor that in, wind chills, what you're dressing for when you step outside in the upper teens and 20s in many locations. So you will want to bundle up if you're stepping out for any early Saturday morning plans. And really even into this afternoon, it's still going to be a chilly day, all things considered, topping off near about 45 degrees here in the Alamo City. Something else you'll likely notice before the day is done, increasing cloud cover. And that's signaling bigger changes that move in. By this time, the weekend is over tomorrow. Increasing rain chances throughout the day on Sunday. The cloud cover there as well. Still a chilly and damp day. Widespread rain is expected by Sunday night and early Monday morning. Maybe a few non-severe thunderstorms we'll need to monitor there as well. So definitely plan on keeping the umbrella handy as early as tomorrow. And notice those rain chances, they're not going anywhere, at least through the first half of next week. They do continue in a scattered fashion along with warmer temperatures. So we're going to time it all out, get you the latest version of our future cast here coming up a little bit later on, guys. Mia, thank you. And if you plan on traveling to the far northwest side this weekend or live over there, there are some traffic closures you'll want to be aware of. It's true. The frustration is growing more and more by the day. Construction closing the main lanes at Loop 1604 and the I-10 interchange. RJ Marquez explains what you need to know. Well, it's round two of some major closures on the far northwest side. So let's get right to it, show you exactly what you're going to be looking at here. So what we're talking about is that continued work taking place there on 1604 and I-10. They are going to be shutting down both directions of I-10 and also 1604 at this interchange. So if you are coming up on I-10, you're going to have to exit UTSA Boulevard to La Cantera Parkway. That's when you're going to be able to get back onto the highway. Now for our drivers on 1604, you're going to have to exit Vance Jackson, go all the way up to the rim and around Around, and then you could get back onto Lock and Terra Parkway on the 1604 side. So we went out the other day and got some drone video of exactly the latest sort of updates that we're seeing here. So again, this is a ramp that is being built uh, from Loop 1604 eastbound to westbound I-10 that's going to be going up to Bernie. And uh, what Texas is doing and construction crews, they're going to be hanging more beams this weekend, of course, if the weather allows. This closure is going to be in place through 5 o'clock Monday morning, and they're going to continue with this at another closure closure next weekend as well. So obviously you see these beams are going up right now. There's a lot of work taking place there. So if you can avoid the area, make sure to do that. We have more information on ksat.com. We come out real quick here to our maps. All right, and again, just one more reminder, 1604 I-10 completely shut down through the weekend. Hopefully we could get things back open at 5 a.m. That's what TechSide is saying on Monday. So just avoid the area if you can, if possible. Stay safe out there. Thank you, RJ. A lot of news to tell you about this morning. New today, we now know two people waking up in the hospital after being stabbed overnight on the city's southeast side. This is what we're being told right now from police. Investigators say this happened just after 10 last night. It happened on Goliad and Lassa Street. A fight broke out inside a bar. The staff kicked out those who were involved in the confrontation. The customers then started back up fighting in the parking lot. That's when two suspects involved, they pulled out knives. They stabbed the other two people. Police still through the morning searching for the two responsible. As for the victims, at last check taken to the hospital, still in critical condition. Well, since a horrific school shooting at Robb Elementary 20 months ago, families of the victims want officials to be held accountable. Yesterday, the Uvalde County District Attorney convening a special grand jury to go over her investigative materials. 
As Lee Waldman explains, it's a rarely used tactic, but one criminal defense attorney believes it could be a good tool. After repeated calls Thursday. Do your job. What else does she possibly need to prosecute? Uvalde County District Attorney Christina Mitchell making a big step Friday, convening a special grand jury to examine the Robb Elementary School shooting investigation. The news first reported by the Uvalde Leader News. So what that should help. Criminal defense attorney Brent De La Paz says calling for a special grand jury is a unique move. A special grand jury has this specific purpose of looking at one particular issue, one particular case. A dozen people from the community will serve on the special grand jury, going over the investigation that the Texas Rangers handed over to Mitchell. KSAT has learned through a joint lawsuit with other media organizations against the Texas Department of Public Safety, the investigative material is 2.8 terabytes of data. And the whole purpose is for them to look at everything instead of one thing in a vacuum. Now they have uh, an array of information that they can pour over. The special grand jury can subpoena witnesses, compel evidence, and most importantly, ask questions about charges that could be brought. Child endangerment. Do you think that would be a fair charge to present to a special grand jury or grand jury? And Everything is, is going to be on the table. And I think if a special grand juror were to ask that exam, exact same question, I think that's a fair question to ask. Child endangerment is a felony charge in Texas. It has a statute of limitations of five years or 10 years after the victim's 18th birthday. The special grand jury proceedings are expected to last at least six months. Then they'll hand over their recommendations to the DA. From there, Mitchell can sit a regular grand jury and pursue criminal charges if she chooses. They can then use that information to start asking those questions, to start trying to find out what is a reasonable charge to bring and against whom. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, Brenda La Paz, a criminal defense attorney in San Antonio, says the latest report could be just what the Uvalde District Attorney's Office has been waiting on to bring the case to a grand jury. A grand jury would meet in secret, hear the case, and decide if there's enough evidence to file charges. De La Paz says the statute of limitations on some personal injury and misdemeanor charges is quickly approaching, but there's still a bit more time to file felony charges. I think it's been pretty clear um, who some of the targets are, whether or not they will actually be charged. It, that's, a, that's a local decision. So he explains that when or if charges are filed, it may still take a long time to bring resolution to this case. And sticking with the courts, the Texas headlines are ruling from a county judge is ordering Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton that he has to testify under oath in the whistleblower case against him. So just yesterday, the judge saying Ken Paxton and three other witnesses, they must appear for deposition set in February. Remember, a whistleblower accused Ken Paxton of using his office to help a prominent donor. The allegations and his failed efforts to pay four plaintiffs millions in state funds what well, led to his impeachment trial last year. Now, the AG has denied these allegations, but so far, no word yet from the office of the attorney general on yesterday's ruling. New video from yesterday morning shows Texas authorities arresting a group of 10 migrants in Eagle Pass. The state started making its own arrests there Wednesday. Migrants are being charged with criminal trespassing in state court before they are handed over to the Border Patrol. Those with families and children are handed over immediately. The situation is a source of increasing tension between Texas and the Department of Homeland Security. Well, this is a fascinating case here in the state of Texas, and it pertains to Rice University. They have now set aside more than $33 million settling a major price-fixing suit. So financial statements from last year, it shows an antitrust lawsuit was filed against 17 prestigious private universities across the country. Now, this suit, it accused of illegally running a scheme that actually limited the amount of financial aid given to students. Court records related to the case were reviewed yesterday, they don't show a settlement agreement has been reached yet, but the Texas Tribune reporting that Rice has declined to comment and the plaintiffs have not yet responded to requests either. Well, Texas has become the front runner in a shift towards renewable energy using wind and solar power. The Texas Tribune says the Lone Star State is the largest wind and wind energy producer in the U.S., producing 28 percent of the country's wind energy just last year. 
So Texas has almost 16,000 wind turbines. I'm sure you've seen them throughout South Texas. It's the most in any state and 300 wind related projects. In our Saturday spotlight, San Antonio's tiny mariachi singer Mateo Lopez was on the Kelly Clarkson show yesterday. For the second time, Mateo's family says Clarkson was brought to tears when he first performed on the show back in October. That's when Clarkson said she would invite the young San Antonian on the show again to sing with her in person, and she kept her word. Oh, Way to go, Mateo. Sing a duet <laughs> of Ami Manera by Frank Sinatra with Kelly Clarkson. He's currently recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as being the world's youngest mariachi at four. Hold on, he's only four? <laughs> what a mature young man and beautiful voice. So great job, Mateo. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic. Way to represent San Antonio. Way to represent. Time now, 8-11, 28 degrees. 28 degrees, yes, it's still happening. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is it, according to Mia, and we're gonna get some much needed rain on the way that we don't have to worry about icy precip on the roads like we did earlier in the week. She'll explain when we come back. In Corpus Christi, the Texas Sea Life Center opened its doors and cared for over 40 cold Aww. stunned sea turtles during the freeze this week. Workers at the center are now rehabbing these vulnerable turtles and we wish them some warmer weather heading that way soon. I've covered this story so many times growing up in Corpus, Aww. guys, and it's really it's really sad because they're just like in all these plastic tubs and they're like not moving. <laughs> um, but shout out to all of the biologists and researchers out there that take care of our endangered sea turtles. Yeah, and so warmer weather is on the way? Warmer weather is on the way. Okay. I know it is very, very cold this morning, but it's not nearly as cold as what we saw earlier this week when we had to deal with the ice and that first very strong Arctic cold front that moved through. So yes, last hard freeze this morning. A few of us could briefly dip down to near freezing tomorrow, but after that, we are warming things up. And we also have rain chances to talk about. Much needed rain. So we've gone from extreme cold to now increasing rain chances really as early as tomorrow. So today we're dry tomorrow. A few sprinkles possible in the morning, but then widespread rain and a few thunderstorms expected tomorrow night and into Monday morning and still scattered chances continue Tuesday and into Wednesday. So you're definitely going to want to grab the umbrella by tomorrow. Keep it handy through at least the first half of the upcoming week. So I want to talk, talk about that setup and really time that out here. You can see we are quiet across South Central Texas early this Saturday morning. It is a different story, though, well off to our west near San Francisco, Los Angeles, across California, scattered even widespread rain and storms up and running this morning. That is associated with the disturbance. This area of low pressure is going to continue to work eastward here over the next 36 hours, diving into the desert southwest by tomorrow. And as it approaches Texas, we're expecting upper level energy, some pockets of that energy to move into the state ahead of that system. So when you combine that with increasing moisture, that's what's going to help spark up that much needed rain. So here's a look at the latest version of your future cast timing this out for you today. Chilly starting off in the upper 20s, low 30s, highs in the 40s. So we do warm well above freezing this afternoon, increasing cloud cover. But again, pretty dry in terms of any rain tomorrow morning in between about 7 to 9 o'clock in the morning, a few sprinkles possible closer to San Antonio. And there is the potential during that brief window to find a few pockets of very light freezing rain, mainly in the hill country near Bandera, Kerrville, Lakey, even stretching over to Rock Springs, minimal to no impacts. Not not expecting any travel impacts from this, maybe just a very light icy glaze on some of those elevated surfaces like car windshields, street signs, things of that nature. But by midday, whatever we do find out there that quickly transitions to just cold liquid rain as temperatures start to warm a little bit more above 32 degrees in the hill country. And that's really what most of us are going to be dealing with throughout the day tomorrow. 
even into the afternoon and especially by Sunday night. Coverage is expected to increase, so more widespread rain, a few non-severe thunderstorms possible overnight Sunday and into early Monday morning. Notice your timeline here. This is by the morning drive, so you're definitely going to want to give yourself a little bit of extra time. Plan on taking the rain gear with you and expect a messy and soggy start to the day on Monday. That continues along and east of I-35 midday on Monday before this first round then moves out of the area by Monday afternoon. Still, though, we are expecting a few more scattered rain chances to continue into Tuesday and even into Wednesday there as well. More isolated as we head into the back half of the week. By the time all is said and done, check this out. I think upwards of two inches of rain will be possible around San Antonio. Generally, the farther west it should go, lower totals, the farther east, higher totals. Closer to Houston, they could pick up over five inches of rain by the time next week is over. So we'll definitely monitor that. Warmer temperatures arrive thereafter as well. Unfortunately, not so warm right now. Upper 20s and low 30s in and around the San Antonio area. Dress very warmly this morning. Again, high temperatures topping off in the mid 40s later on this afternoon as that cloud cover starts to stream into the region. Near freezing in some locations. First thing tomorrow, we may struggle to get out of the 30s tomorrow with that cloud cover and the rain. So also prepare for a damp and chilly day. But after that, we are warming things up. Highs in the 60s Ooh. and lows in the 50s. See, this is the South Texas I love. I'm excited about it. There we go. I'm excited for the rain. Me too. Thank you, Mia. Thanks, Mia. Time now just about 820, 29 degrees. From Madonna's new lawsuit, lawsuit to who's joining Usher at the Super Ooh. Bowl next month. Coming up soon, we have your latest headlines and entertainment news when we come back. Okay, being late apparently isn't always better than never. According to some Madonna fans, the singer is being sued by two ticket holders accused of false advertising and ne negligent misrepresentation. So according to the lawsuit, Madonna was two hours late for all three of her concerts last month in Brooklyn. The plaintiffs say most concert goers didn't get out until after one in the morning which caused them to have to spend more money for public transportation because obviously there's less options available at that time. This actually isn't the first time Madonna's tardiness has caused problems. In 2019, she was sued for not taking the stage until 10.30 p.m. Mm. Well, we're not sure which football teams will actually be in Super Bowl 58 just yet. There are playoff games today. Go Texans. But we do know who will be kicking it off. Post Malone, Woo! Reba, and... Andre Day confirmed as pregame performers. So Reba, great show, by the way, better mm -hmm. singer. She will be singing the national anthem. Post Malone will take care of America the Beautiful. And Day will do lift every voice and sing. Now, Usher is the star of the halftime show. He says preparations are, quote, another level. Oh, I thought maybe Post Malone was going to join Usher on stage. I love Post Malone. Oh, for the halftime performance? Yeah, I mean, I... I I love him. He's right. a Dallas Cowboys fan, so I'm sure he's sad that they're not going to be there. Yeah, I'm sure he's very surprised. <laughs> Time now, 824, 28 degrees. Okay, there's lots of events happening in and around the Alamo City today. We'll tell you about some of them after the break. Happening today, Pecan Town Books and Brews, that's on South Camp Street in Seguin, is holding a free mental health fair from 10 in, this mor 10 in the morning until 1 p.m. A therapist nutritionist and chiropractor will be mm. there to answer your questions about fighting depression and anxiety. So you have a successful year. Also happening today from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. San Antonio Charters Moms. Well, they are hosting a free day at the museum to kick off National Choice Week. The first 1,000 guests who register online for this free event. They're going to have a chance to meet with representatives from almost 40 of San Antonio's top schools. Now, uh, we're reaching the height of San Antonio's enrollment season, so make sure to take advantage of the free opportunity. Time now is 828, 28 degrees. Ahead in our next half hour from mortgage rates to student loan forgiveness, we have the latest news in finance. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. It is 831, it is Saturday, January 20th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. So, I like that. She's so excited, she's like bopping up and yeah. down. Yeah. We're excited because we're being told that the cold is on its way out. Yes. It's 28 it is, degrees. It is freezing this morning, literally, metaphorically. Are you okay? No. This northeast <laughs> boy. Man. 
man <laughs> turns into a boy because he hates the cold. I hate the cold so much, but Mia delivered some great news this morning. Yep. Uh, not only are we going to warm things up by the back half of the weekend, but we're also going to see much needed rain chances return. So yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a week. We had the Arctic air to start the week, a little bit of ice. Things got better though. Thursday we were in the 70s. We had another front move through though. that knocked us down into the 40s yesterday. We were near about 50 degrees in some locations. By the way, it was a great day for some school School visits had told the fifth graders at Wortham Oaks Elementary I'd give them a shout out this morning. They were amazing. They asked great questions. Loved hanging out with them, talking about the weather. All right, want to get you the latest when it comes to our pollen count. Mo Mountain cedar drops a little bit from where it was yesterday, but it still is in the high category. Molds are present, but they are low at 490. So I guess good news there. But of course, we'll continue to keep eyes on that as we continue on throughout the remainder of the weekend in terms of your pollen count. But yes, it is a cold start to to this Saturday temperatures below freezing still in and around the San Antonio area 28 officially here in town 32 in Pleasanton 28 in Hondo looks like we're at 28 now in New Braunfels there too so still some sunshine into this morning around 35 at 10 a.m. 40 degrees for lunchtime plans still chilly though into this afternoon high temperatures topping off in the mid 40s cloud cover is also going to increase before the day is done here's a look at those forecast highs in and around the San Antonio area 48 for places like Floresville, Nixon, 46 in New Braunfels, 48 in Rio Medina. Here come those changes though. Still near freezing in some locations first thing tomorrow morning. It is going to be a cold into the weekend, but we start to see those rain chances increase throughout the day on Sunday. Widespread rain Sunday night, Monday morning. Notice into early next week those temperatures too. They are warmer. We start to see lows climb into the 50s and highs in the 60s. So we continue to crawl out of the freezer here into next week. And yes, those rain chances are in the forecast. We're going to time it out, get to the latest version of your future cast again, coming up in just a few minutes. Mia, thank you for your latest news around San Antonio. Two San Antonio ISD officials have lost their jobs after heating problems at the district schools. San Antonio ISD Superintendent Jaime Aquino told staff in a memo this week he accepted the resignations of Deputy Superintendent of Operations Ken Thompson and Chief of Operations Mike Eaton. In his memo, Aquino said the district knows there is more than one cause to the heating problems and that it plans to examine the event and publish a report. Though he also said it was an error on part of leaders in the district, the schools are expected to reopen on Monday. And this week, staff at nonprofit news organization San Antonio Report, they have voted to unionize, giving their management until this past Thursday to recognize the union. San Antonio Report releasing a statement this week saying workers at the 12-year-old outlet moved to unionize for improved pay equity, grievance procedures, and job security. San Antonio Report's management declined to voluntarily recognize the employee's newly formed union. Their CEO and publisher has responded saying management is trying to work with the union as quickly as possible. After more than a decade of operating in San Antonio on Broadway Street, Fratello's Market and Deli will permanently close on the last day of this month. Oh no, mm -hmm. a joint statement released by the partners stated their age is a key factor in their decision to close and says customers are still welcome to visit the restaurant one last time. In your morning money news, the Biden administration, they announced that they're gonna be forgiving almost $5 billion in student debt for more than 70,000 borrowers. So this result, well, it is the result of a U.S. Department of Education's fixes to its income-driven repayment plans and public service loan forgiveness program. The announcement didn't exactly specify when eligible borrowers will expect to see the relief, but the Biden administration now on record saying that they have canceled more than $136 billion in student debt for almost 4 million Americans. And good news for home buyers, mortgage rates are declining. The average rate is now 6.6%. That's the lowest we've had since May. New data from Freddie Mac shows mortgage rates remain a full percentage point lower than last year's high of 7.79. But as more buyers get into the housing hunt, low inventory will likely keep those prices high. Back in San Antonio, new data from the local commercial company, Weitzman. While it shows the city's retail sector was a bright spot in commercial real estate last year, the occupancy rate soaring to its highest level in decades, meaning 
more people are filling the stores. Now, Weitzman says the area's biggest shopping centers and malls, they're about 95% full around the holidays. The firm says this increase is due to new space being built, discount stores expanding, and San Antonio's population increasing. The firm says we, quote unquote, remain strongly positive about San Antonio's market performance in 2024. And now to a new strategy for grocery shopping that's taken off on social media. People who try it say the six to one method saves them both money and time. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze tests it out. It's the viral strategy saving some grocery shoppers time and money. Let me see my favorite grocery shop on a budget in 30 minutes. Meet the six to one method. Influencer Will Coleman's creation where each week you buy six veggies, five fruits, four proteins, three starches, two sauces, one fun thing for yourself, and that's it. What was behind the idea of this method? I just wanted to take control of my wallet and my time and, and just figure out a way to be strategic when it came to the normal thing of grocery shopping, something we all have to do. Coleman says he spends between 80 and $90 per week using the six to one method on groceries for his household of two, almost half of what the typical couple spends every week. The six to one method has saved me hundreds of dollars because you come in the grocery store with a plan. You're not just shopping for anything. Tiara Smith says the method helped cut back spending cash on takeout. And it forces me to save even more money because I'm not going to eat out because I have food at home that I know I can cook. We decided to give the six to one method a try. This definitely counts as one fruit, right? For me, six fresh vegetables felt like a lot to use before they spoiled. Okay, we'll do some broccoli. Why not? I opted for some frozen options. Good for the kids. And my one fun item, coffee. It was non-negotiable. My bill coming out to just under $100. Nutritionists say the plan, which is heavy in produce, also has health benefits. I always feel like we can all stand to have more plants in our pattern of eating. So this breakdown really encourages people to eat their fruits and veggies. Okay, this was actually a conversation we had yesterday. My girlfriend and I were going through the fridge and it is a race to finish. I'm sure so many of you out there, a when lot you- of pressure when you're trying to finish all the produce. The produce, I know so many families, you try to buy in bulk, but at the end of the week, you're looking at that produce and you're like, yeah, hey- You waste a lot. You waste a lot. And so we're, we're trying to pull back in that way, save a little bit of money. And obviously, you know, with this freeze, that's having a direct impact on our produce. Absolutely. Um, but what you, what you can do with all of that food that's mm -hmm. going to waste, you can compost it. Okay, <laughs> there you go, shameless plug. Okay, so have you started to peek under the plant coverings mm. and have found that your plants are looking dead from the Arctic freeze that we had? Not great. Week? You saved yours though. Yeah, mine did pretty well. Good. So in this week's Gardening with KSAT, I show you why some of your plants aren't really dead. They're just oh. dormant. They're like vampires. Yeah, and what you can do next. South Texas just endured another Arctic freeze, and you worked hard to save your beloved plants. So now your plants look like this, or this, or even a little bit of this. Don't panic and don't pull them up. Your plants most likely aren't dead. They just died back, they've gone dormant, and will probably come back in the spring. So now what? All you can do right now is wait. I know, I'm not a patient person, and I hate it when my garden looks this sad. But it's what our plants need right now, a little bit of space. Plants don't like clingy gardeners. Don't prune anything just yet. If you start pruning away the dead stuff now, you can do more harm than good. Remember, we can get another freeze and those dead leaves and stems can protect your plants. I would wait to prune until at least the end of February or after several weeks of warm weather. And before you prune, make sure you check the forecast with the KSAT weather team to make sure there's not a freeze in the next 10 days. What you can do is scrape the wood. If it's still green, your plants alive and will sprout in the spring. Yay! And your garlic, it's not dead. Let that foliage die back. It's still very much doing its thing under the soil, trust me. And if your sago palms have a little bit of damage, don't worry, they're most likely gonna come back. You can confirm this by checking the crown to make sure it's still solid. You'll know your plants are still alive once growth starts sprouting from the roots, most likely by March to early May. Okay, some plants may have not made it. Here's the ones that are most at risk, mm. the ones that you newly planted in the fall, especially if you didn't cover them. So make sure you uncover them this afternoon. They can soak up 
the sun and you may not really need to cover them fully unless they're super sensitive because I just asked Mia, we might get to a light freeze, but nothing like we've been seeing. So if you want uncover them, make sure you uncover them at least by tomorrow morning so they can soak up that much needed rain that we're going to get throughout the week, which will help them spring back to life in a couple of months. All right, time now, 842, 29 degrees. 29 degrees. Woo. Oh. It is cold out there. You know what? One thing I really like about this cold weather, Max. Please tell me. No frizzy hair. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm you. trying to look at the positive here. There you go. Op also, also positive news. Mia says there's rain in our forecast. All right, welcome back everyone. So very cold start this morning. This weekend is still going to be chilly mid 40s today. In fact, tomorrow could be a little bit colder with the increasing rain chances and the cloud cover. But next week we start to warm things back up. Also keeping some of the rain chances in the forecast there as well. So here's a look at your weather headlines today. Exactly increasing clouds. We've got plenty of sunshine out there right now, but I do think we will end the day with a bit more cloud cover in place. Highs in the mid 40s, so colder than average for this time of year. Looking ahead to tomorrow, cloudy and cold, but we do have those increasing rain chances in the forecast. Widespread rain. Some pockets could be heavy in terms of the rain rates. Also a few thunder storms possible Sunday night and early Monday morning. Then into next week, yes, those warmer temperatures, rain chances continue in a scattered fashion, at least through the first half of the upcoming week. So I want to talk all about it and time it out for you. Get you the latest right now here in San Antonio, below freezing 28 degrees, very cold winds out of the north at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. So especially where we do have some of those breezier spots, feels like temperatures in the teens are being noticed across portions of the Alamo City and surrounding areas. As we zoom this out and take a look at the big picture across the Lone Star State, a lot of us are still below freezing this hour. 21 in Tyler, 20 in Dallas. Current temperature up in Amarillo, 13 degrees. It's not just the Lone Star State, though, that's dealing with this cold weather. 17 in Little Rock, 21 in Denver, Colorado, minus 3 up in Bismarck, North Dakota in the northern tier. Warmer, though, across portions of the desert southwest and even near the western coastline. That's where some rain scattered even widespread is already up and running this Saturday morning, all thanks to this area of low pressure approaching the west coast. This is going to be the disturbance that tracks eastward over the next 24 to 36 hours and essentially allows just enough upper level energy to move into south central Texas. When you combine that with some increasing moisture in place, that's what allows us to increase those rain chances again as early as tomorrow. So in between about seven Seven to nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I think we could see a few sprinkles in and around the San Antonio area. Can't completely rule out a little bit of light freezing rain across the hill country where temperatures could briefly dip down to a light freeze near Bandera, Kerrville, Rock Springs, even Lakey. Again, a little bit of light freezing rain possible in that brief small window impacts minimal to none, maybe just a light glaze on some of those elevated surfaces. But as temperatures start to rise by midday, that transition to so just cold liquid rain. That's what most of us are going to be dealing with throughout the day. So definitely keep the umbrella handy. Notice by Sunday night, this is 11 p.m. The radar is expected to be uh, pretty colorful out there. A bit more widespread in terms of that rain coverage into early Monday morning by the morning drive. It is going to be messy and soggy in spots. Some heavy rain is expected. So definitely plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time out the door. Then that first round moves east by Monday afternoon. Still going to hold on to some scattered rain chances at least into the Wednesday time frame. I think by the time all is said and done here in the San Antonio area, we could find upwards of two inches of rain higher farther east, lower farther west. That certainly will help out with the drought situation. There are those warmer temperatures, lows in the 50s and highs in the 60s. So just have to get through this chilly weekend before we start to warm things up. We're going to take a step aside. And we'll be right back after the Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. So, as you may or may not know, the San Antonio Zoo has dubbed itself the Valentine's capital of the world and they have a bunch of frankly hilarious events going on next week. Yeah, month. the dancing cockroach on social media is back. I love it. Fantastic. And it's all for the loved Cry Me a Cockroach fundraiser event coming back this year. Can we talk about this for a second? So I've done this story the last three years and 
you name a cockroach after your ex, and then it gets fed to what is it? A, Whatever animal. Yeah. I mean, they. Oh, also, that's me! Look at that. Look there. Max <laughs> loves this story. Apparently, he has lots of. Well, I remember. So you were on the desk with Mark last year when I was out there live. Yeah. And you just loved the fact that I had to pick up cockroaches. Yes. You refused to give me a name to throw in there. I think Mark threw one out there. Um, I have a couple in there <laughs> out there. Okay, so that's one of the popular events. Another one, but new this year, a hippo poop scented candle. Mm. Okay. Okay. The zoo says it's, it can be sent to an ex. Oh, that's interesting. Have you ever smelt hippo poop? I have not. Mia, you've smelt hippo poop. Soft yeah. Okay. It doesn't smell good. No. Team no. effort. The important part is that all of this, it does help raise funds for the zoo. They're yes. going under huge multi-million dollar expansions, and it really is such an amazing effort. We have all this information. Just head to ksat.com. Time now, just about 8.54, 29 degrees. Several household items are being recalled from major stores. After the break, we'll tell you what to throw out. The Consumer Product Safety Commission announced a recall of more than 500,000 beds from the company Home Design. Look at your screen. These are the ones. These beds are sold at stores like Walmart and Wayfair. The CPSC says they collapse or break while they're being used, with reports of more than 100 incidents of collapsing beds and dozens of people getting hurt. Users can contact Home Design for a free replacement. All right, now to recall that we have brought up before, but this time salmonella cases, they've doubled since the first warning we brought you. The CDC continuing to alert consumers about what you see on your screen right here. This is the charcuterie meat trays from Sam's and Costco. The brands are Bassetto and Fratelli Barata. Check your fridge, throw out the meats, or contact the store about a refund. We have a lot more information about this recall on our website. Just look for the article, front page of ksat.com. Mm. Oh, scary stuff. Lots of charcuterie meats oh, in my yeah. fridge. <laughs> Time now. Yeah, check that. Yeah. Time now, 857, 28 degrees. Ahead in our next half hour, are you feeling burnt out from work? We have some tips. Don't on... answer that question. <laughs> I looked right at Max <laughs> on how to feel like yourself again. And we're live at O'Connor High School, Northside ISD. This is awesome. They're yeah. kicking off their week-long livestock show just in time for the rodeo season. So many scholarships raised by the livestock show here in Bear County. Taking a look at 10 and 1604, which is going to be closed until 5 a.m. Monday morning. For all those alternate routes, head to ksat.com. We'll be right back.